So we see here the king doesn't like the words of Jeremiah. They, he's saying, let this man be put to death. He weakens the hand of the men of war who remains in the city, Jerusalem, and the hands of all people by speaking such words to them. For this man does not seek the welfare of this people, but their harm. You see, we some of the people don't understand when someone is for their good or for their harm. And if you don't know if someone is for your good or your harm, you are in trouble. This is why our people, this is why most of our people following churches, following camps, this is the reason why. They don't know these these camps are not for the people. These churches are not for the people. Oh, when are we going to see this? Then Zedekiah, the king said, look, he is in your hand for the king can do nothing against you. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of, of Malachi, the king, the king's son which was in the court of the prison. And they let Jeremiah down with ropes in the dungeon and there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sank in the mire. Jeremiah was in a bad position. If you would have saw him, you would say this man is going to die. He's go That's it. It's over for him. He's in this hole. He's in a bad situation. And these people, surely he's not the voice of the most, he's not speaking for the most high. They took, they always took the righteous person as a wicked one. And then when a wicked one speak, Shaul, they listen. And never could they figure out the difference between the two. They didn't, they struggled. And our people to this day don't know the difference between a righteous voice and a wicked voice. And they have no problems coming against a righteous voice. Now, Ebed Melek, check this out, the Ethiopian. Now, I have to bring a point out here because all these people, they are Joshua Raw. And we see camps speaking against Hamites. They're always speaking against Hamites. It's funny. Don't They don't really know Hamites. The system put us against the Hamites. You know, it was the Hamites that put you guys, that helped put you in slavery. And so they continually put one against the other, just like they put Joshua against Joshua. We are our own enemy. We are our own memory. Uh, listen, those of our kind, Joshua, we are our own enemies. And we should understand this by now. And there is no worse enemy than those that of your own household. And here it is. We see an Ethiopian. It's an Ethiopian. Watch what this Ethiopian does. One of the Enochs who was in the king's house heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. He heard this. When the king was sitting at the gate, Benjamin, Ebed, Melek went, went out of the house of the king's house and spoke to the king saying, my master, the king, these men have done evil. So this Hamite once again, we have a Hamite around Yasha Ross. You see other nations was around us. This was something common. You see all through scripture, other nations, they were around us, but they were living according to Torah. These were righteous men. How can we say this? Because he knew righteousness from, uh, from wickedness and he knew they'd done evil. He could have been like them and said, this man was evil. He needs to be in the dungeon. No. He knew that Jeremiah was righteous and he was speaking for the most high. And he said, they've done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet. He, he, he honoring him as the prophet whom they cast into the dungeon. And he is likely to die from hunger in the place where he is. Yes, no food, no water. He was in a bad position. How can you being righteous? How can you being a righteous man, you being a righteous woman, how can you end up in a bad position, end up in an abusive relationship? It happens. And some of the time, some, most of the time since we grew up in the Western society, Western world, we came up Western mentality and we did things we shouldn't have been doing and we end up in abusive relationships. And the Most High wants us he wants his people out of these abusive relationships. 
we did things ignorantly. It's time out for doing things ignorantly. We have to now change our thinking and do things the way the Most High want us to do things. We need to understand. A lot of us need to understand how we got in these abusive relationships and how to get out of them. So here we see this man, this Ethiopian, understanding they done evil against the prophet. Now the king commanded, um, he commanded Ebed Malik, the Ethiopian, saying, take from, the, from here 30 men with you and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. So the Most High came in through a Hamite to save Jeremiah. So Ebed Malek took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took from there old clothes. He took old clothes and old rags. He took what he could find and let them down by ropes into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Then Ebed Malek the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, please put these old clothes and rags under your armpits. Now let somebody pull you out with some old clothes and some old rags. Our people be like, I'm not touching that. I don't know who wore these old clothes and put them under my armpits. I'm not doing this. You see, some of us are too sadiddy. And this is something we have to break out of. So he says, put them under your armpits, under the ropes. And Jeremiah did so. And they pulled Jeremiah up with the ropes and lifted him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the, in the court of the prison. He's still in a bad situation. And things look bad for him. Then Zedekiah the king sent and had Jeremiah the prophet brought up to him at the third entrance of the house of Yahuwah. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you something. Hide nothing from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I declare it to you, will you surely put me to death? The prophet was afraid and had to get something straight. If I say this to you, if I answer this question, are you going to have me put to death? And if I give you advice, will you listen to me? So this is another question. Why ask me a question? And then according to scripture and according to the knowledge I've obtained from the scripture, I give you the answer according to scripture and you don't listen. Why did you even listen? So no, we can't be bothered with these people that believe the land of Yasharal is in South Africa. We can't be bothered with we. This is, this is nonsense. We don't, we don't, we're not bothered by that. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly to Jeremiah saying, as Yahuwah lives, who made our very souls. I will not put you to death, nor will I give you into the hand of those men who seek your life. There were those that seek his life, the righteous man's life, to kill him. And Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says Yahuwah, the mighty one, the mighty one, the, the host of, of Yasharal, the mighty one. He says, If you surely surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live. Understand when the scripture says your soul, your soul being cut off, your soul shall live. You know, you shall deliver yourself, deliver your soul. He's talking about delivering your life. You shall save your soul shall live. This city shall not be burned with fire and you and your household shall live. But if you do not surrender to the king, of Babylon's princes, then this city shall be given into the hand of the Chaldeans. They shall burn it with fire and you shall not escape from their hand. The same word, the same words the Most High spoke to him, they still apply, they still stand. The Most High's word still applies to this day. It still stands regardless if the Christian pastors say the law is done away with. Just because they say it's done away with does not mean it's done away with. Verse 19, and Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I'm not afraid of Yahudis who have defected to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hands and they abuse me. But Jeremiah said, they shall not deliver you. 
please obey the voice of Yahuwah which I speak to you. So this is what the prophets would say to the people today. Please obey the voice of the Most High. So it shall be well with you. See, it's good if we listen to the voice of the Most High and know when he speak. He's, he's the one that said, come out of her, my people. We know who told us to come out. The strong and righteous is the weak ones. They don't know he told us to come out. The camp leaders, they don't know he told us to come out. They're looking for some other type of way. So it shall be well with you and your soul shall live. But if you refuse to surrender, this is the word that Yahuwah has shown me. Now behold, all the women who are left in the king of Yehuda's house shall be surrendered to the kings of Babylon's princes. And those, and those women shall say, your close friends have set upon you and prevail against you. Your feet have sunk in the mire and they have turned away again. So, so they shall surrender all your wives and children to the Chaldeans and you shall not escape from their hand but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon and you shall cause this city to be burned with fire then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah let no one know of these words and you shall not die but if the princes hear that I have talked with you and they come to you and say to you declare to us now what you have said to the king and also what the king said to you do not hide it from us and we will not put you to death then you shall say to them i presented my request before the king that he would not make me return to J to jonathan's house to die there then all the princes came to Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all the words the king had commanded. So they stopped speaking with him, for the conversation had not been heard. Now Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken. So he remained there until they were taken, and he was there when Jerusalem was taken. So he, Jeremiah, was in a bad position. He was left for dead. It was, it was a wrap for him. And we saw the Ethiopian coming to his rescue. And now Jeremiah is still alive, doing the commands of the Most High being taken into the hands of the King of Babylon. Another example, and this is our last example. This is Abraham. This is, this is Abraham, our last example here. Jasher, 12 one through nine we know the story we know what happened here in jasher we, we don't get this in the bible but we see this in jasher and when the king heard the words of abram he ordered him to be put into prison abram was doing righteous abram didn't want to have anything to do with wickedness and those idols and he destroyed his father's idols and these idols, these men idolized these idols. They thought power came from these idols. And here's Abraham. Ten days, he was in prison in a bad situation. How is it, righteous men being thrown in prison? How is it today? You know, Isaiah says, the Most High said in Isaiah, my people are hidden in prison. Look in the prisons. You will find his people. And they are right. There are some righteous people today in prison. Man has a habit of throwing righteous people in prison. It happened in the scriptures. And it continues till this day. And at the end of those days, the king ordered that all the kings, princes, and governors of different provinces of the saves should come before him. And they sat before him. And Abram was still in the house of confinement. And the king said to the princes and sages, Have you heard that Abram, the son of Terah, has done to his father? So he's telling them, you heard what he done? Thus he done to him. And I ordered him to be brought before me. And thus has he spoken. His heart did not misgive him. 
So here he's telling them everything that he did. He didn't, he, he wasn't hiding it. 